Welcome to the September 27th online worship of Fort Hill United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Brown. I'm the pastor at Fort Hill. Jacob Dishman, our director of music ministries, is, is also here today helping us as we lead in worship. And we thank Jeanette Sill, who will be our scripture reader for today. As we worship today, we also want to let you know that we have in-person worship at Fort Hill at 1030 on Sunday mornings. You will find an order of worship attached to the means by which you are seeing the service today. We invite you to, to uh, find that order of worship as we will be using it in our, in our worship liturgy today. It is a good day to worship the God of our salvation. I invite us to join together in the call to worship. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make God's face to shine upon us. That God's way may be known upon earth, God's saving power among all nations. The splendor Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God at three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 32. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. 
He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. This is the word of God for the people of God. Things are not what they always appear to be. Frank Koch and Proceedings, the magazine of the Naval Institute, tells of two battleships assigned to a training squadron which had been at sea on maneuvers during challenging weather. They had been out for several days, and Koch was serving on the lead battleship and was on bridge watch as night fell. He reports that the visibility was poor, with patches of fog, so the captain remained on the bridge, keeping an eye on all activities. Shortly after dark, the lookout on the wing of the bridge reported light bearing on the starboard bow. The captain called out, is it steady or moving astern? The lookout replied, steady, captain, which meant they were on a dangerous collision course with that ship. The captain called the signalmen Signal that ship. We are on a collision course. Advise you change course 20 degrees. Back came a signal. Advisable for you to change 20 degrees. The captain said, Send, I'm a captain. Change course 20 degrees. Back came the reply, I'm a seaman, second class. You had better change course 20 degrees. By that time, the captain was furious. He spat out, send, I'm a battleship. Change course 20 degrees. Back came the flashing light. I'm a lighthouse. Koch reports, we changed course. Things are not always what they appear to be. With wondrous signs, powerful preaching, and soul-reaching parables, Jesus had been revealing the message of God's kingdom, not only for Israel, but for the world. His message of salvation had begun moving beyond Israel to all the world as some Gentiles came to Philip one day, one of Jesus' disciples, with a request that they wished to see Jesus. Philip went and told Jesus what their request was. As they had heard about this miraculous preacher and teacher, and they wanted to see firsthand this person everybody was talking about. Well, the setting for their request in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John actually precedes our reading today. And the setting is that it is Palm Sunday. And the Gentiles who were present as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey amidst the cheering of the crowds. And the Gentiles heard the crowd saying, Hosanna, 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. So they came to Philip and made a request to see the one that all the others were cheering about and for. But instead of seeing the King of Israel, what they saw was the Messiah of the world. Instead of seeing a ruler who glorified himself in the adulation of the crowds, they saw a Savior who sought to glorify God by walking the path of the cross of Calvary. Instead of seeing a self-serving leader, they heard a Savior who spoke of serving. Instead of seeing a teacher who was a self-assured soul, they saw a Savior who confessed, now my soul is troubled. Instead of finding an astonishing miracle worker, the Gentiles saw a Messiah whose sole purpose in life was to glorify God. The Gentiles discovered that things are not always what they appear to be when you see Jesus. Harold S. Kushner in his book, When All You've Ever Wanted Isn't Enough, told of a time when one of his father's business associates had died. Harold accompanied his father to the funeral and the man's family was surrounded by people trying to ease the pain of the family and to make them feel comforted. One of the family members kept saying, you're right. I know you're right, but it doesn't make any difference. Then Kushner reports that a big burly man in his 80s, who was a legend in the toy and game industry, entered the room. This man had escaped from Russia as a youth after having been arrested and tortured by the Tsar's secret police. He had come to this country penniless, illiterate, and he built up an immensely successful company. He was known as a hard bargainer who had built up his company in ways that might not have been as gentle as you would like. He had never learned to read or write, and he hired people to read his mail to him. And the joke in the industry was that he could write a million dollar check and the hardest part for him would be signing his name. Kushner says that when this man walked into the room, he walked over to the family without saying a word and began to cry with them. Kushner reports that you could feel the atmosphere in the room change. Things are not always what they appear to be when you see Jesus. My father was born on September 27th, the day that we worship together now. He's no longer with, with us, but he helped me to see Jesus. One of the times my father helped me to see Jesus occurred one night when I, as a teenager, went out from the house into the garage, jumped into the car, put it into reverse, and backed up. I had not turned the light on in the garage because the last time I was there, the garage door was open, so I did not think about looking at the garage door. What I found was that the garage door was not up, but it was down. I realized this when I heard a crash as the car went into the panel of the garage door. I stopped, pulled forward, 
said, oh no, and went sheepishly into the house. It was a hopeless moment, I thought, as I told my father about what had happened and about backing out into the garage door. Stepping out into the garage, my father looked at me, looked at the door, and said, don't worry about it. I've done the same thing myself. In that grace-filled moment, I realized that things are not always what they appear to be. I realized that my father helped me to see Jesus. The Gentiles came to, G came to Philip and requested to see Jesus and what they found out was that things are not always what they appear to be when you see the Savior of the world. Fellow Gentiles, how are you seeing Jesus this day? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. Today during our prayer, time, I will be offering various prayer petitions for us. Jacob will be playing the, the guitar as a part of our prayer time. And there will, become time, there will come times in the prayer when I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then Jacob is going to lead us in singing, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. We'll sing that twice each time. And so we're going to begin our prayer time with Jacob playing. Uh, this song Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom O God of salvation God of Jesus, God of our Savior, God who calls us to walk to the cross. We offer our prayers to you this day as we seek to see Jesus in our living and through our living. We pray, O oh God, that through our lives, Others might know what it means to have life transformed because of the Savior of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Oh God, as we pray this day, we pray for our world, for leaders of every nation, that they might govern for the common good. We pray for those who suffer this day from the pandemic, both physically as well as, as, well as uh, through challenges they are experiencing with finances, with challenges they are experiencing as they seek to give care, with challenges they experience as they may indeed uh, suffer from this disease, from this virus. We pray, God, for your healing touch and for an end to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
remember this day with thanksgiving the lives of the saints those who have joined the great cloud of witnesses and who call us forward in the race of faith grant that we who are encouraged by them by their memory by their life with you might be people who also encourage others to run together the race of faith we ask God that we might see Jesus in whose name we have prayed this day Amen Friends, may God bless you as you see Jesus. May God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit bless you as you help others to see Jesus. If you find yourself facing times of challenge, need someone to speak with, you may call me. My cell phone is 804-221-9051. If you have prayer requests, you may send them to Mark Brown, M-A-R-C Brown, at forthillumc.com. Friends, as we go forth, remember that we see Jesus this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.